Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me, Jessica McGovern, international multi-award winning portrait photographer. And I'm here today to talk to you about something that I think is useful and I think you'll find it useful as well. And of course, we only have five minutes because it's five minute Friday. I got really aggressive at the end. Don't know where that came from, but it's okay. If you're new here, please do consider hitting the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. The bell icon will help you out because I'll give you a notification every single time I upload a YouTube video. I upload every single week and very occasionally more than that, but always on a Friday at 12 noon UK time, but you don't have to be in the UK to join. You can join from anywhere in the world because everybody else does too. How fast can anybody say that? Can you beat me? I don't know. This is the reason we are gathered here today. So what is this? Why am I hanging on to the end of a bag? This is the little bag that holds the spider cube. Oh my God. This little thing is really, really useful for any photographer really, but mainly I think personally for either beginners or those who struggle with their exposure and the white balance. So let me talk through what the spider cube actually is, what it does and how to use it when you're doing your retouching afterwards. And we're gonna try and do all of that inside five minutes. If you're interested in getting this product, then please do use the link that's in the description below. It's an affiliate link, but it basically tells Datacolor that we've helped them find you as a human. And that means that that helps us. So please do try and use that link if you possibly can. It's complicated advertising brand partnership -y type stuff, but it's a useful thing to do for us and I'd really appreciate it. Let's put five minutes on the clock and start now. So, like I've said, this is a very simple product. It's not as complicated and confusing as the spider checker, which we discussed last time. I'm gonna put a link to that above so that you can go ahead and watch that. The two products can work together. We'll get to that in a second, but they can also work individually. So it really is up to you which one you would prefer. It's very enticing to spin this around a lot. You probably should not do such a thing. However, it kind of brings me onto a good point. This product can be hung from a tree okay or a finger if required so you can ask your clients to hold the item whilst you photograph it or it does come with a screw thread so that you can pop it onto a light stand or onto a tripod and if you use that method then it makes it pretty easy to shoot by yourself so we've got it on something in the scene but you can also have it sat on the top of the spider checker using the push-up thread that's on the back of that if you have it on the spider checker, you can use both simultaneously, but you don't have to have the checker to use the cube and vice versa. So what makes the cube work? Why is it useful? Why is it better than a gray card? And how can you use it to your advantage? The easiest way for me to go around the spider cube and explain it is to explain what it's for and how you should use it afterwards. I'm gonna do a demonstration. It's really straightforward and simple, but data color gives us some guidelines, which is helpful. So you have, Black faces, white faces, gray faces, and the chrome ball on the top. You also have the hole in the bottom. Now the hole in the bottom is really useful for ascertaining where to put your contrast and your black clipping with your exposure without clipping the shadows in the scene. You have your chrome ball, which is useful for showing your level of specular highlights in the scene, but also to tell you when you're gonna be clipping your whites, but not actually clipping your highlights which is where the white sides come in. You also have the gray sides. Now the gray sides are really good on this cube because they're actually split, if you photograph this properly, on two different sides, which means that if you're photographing out on location or in natural light, you can have two different colors of light happening simultaneously and you can select which one you wanna to balance to. For example, if golden hour light's coming in from this side, this side would be in blue shadow. So which one do you wanna to balance to? That's completely up to you. Let's go ahead and look at how you would actually use it. So I shot in the studio today using the cube and I'm going to walk you through some pictures in Lightroom Classic. You can see on this picture that we've just brought it into Lightroom but we have got it set on the raw profile of camera neutral which is my preferred option. I'm probably going to use camera portrait for this shoot but use whatever profile you're used to. Now, it's important to note the level of contrast that we've got going on on these raw profiles. You can see that we've got some highlight clipping and you can check your clipping and you should do when you're using this tool by clicking these little arrows at the top of your histogram when you're in the develop module. We can see this red area, which is a highlight clipping warning. 
And if we were to go ahead and change the profile to Adobe Color, you can see that we actually have a lot of highlight clipping and also some black clipping happening within the hole. That's really useful as a guide. Remember, Data Color say it's okay to have white clipping on the chrome ball, but it's not okay to have white clipping on the white faces. They say it's okay to have black clipping in the black hole, but not on the black faces. Are you with me? So if I put this back to my camera portrait, I can try and get some really good base settings for the rest of my photo shoot. And I'm gonna do that by adding a few different things whilst using the tool that's in front of me. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my white balance clicky drippy dropper and click the gray face. And that's gonna make sure that the white balance is really nice and neutral. I then want to go ahead and look at the brightness. Now, this is something that Data Color haven't said, but I personally feel like this is useful. And what I like to do is if I hover over this white side, I'm looking at the percentage signs that come up underneath my histogram. So keep an eye on them. And I'm hovering over and I'm about 84%-ish. So what I want to do and what I like to do personally is just lift up the overall exposure of the image until that sits at about 90. It's not an exact science. I just find it helps with good exposure. I then want to make sure my contrast is good by adding a few little bits of black clipping in that little hole. So to recap, we've got some clipping here, but none on the white face. We've got some clipping here, but none on the black face. I can if I want to lift my shadows and drop my blacks, but you don't have to do that. It's just how I feel comfortable using this tool. So with that there, then what? Well, the next thing I'm gonna wanna do is make sure I've selected all of the images from my photo shoot that were taken in the same light. If the light changes, reshoot the item. So then I'm gonna press sync, make sure everything is selected by checking all and then press synchronize. When I've done that, my images should all be at a pretty good level to be able to move forwards. I just took some fun shots of Alfie. So uh, we'll go ahead and have a look at one of those. If you can see here, a little bit too much clipping for my liking, so I'm just gonna back off a touch. These clipping areas in the holes, inside the holes, they're okay, okay, they're okay. I might go ahead and lift my shadows a little bit more if needed, but again, holes, nostrils are a hole, it's okay. So what does this image look like if we compare the before to the after? Well, that's the before and that's the after. So you can see it's got me to a pretty good stage straight off the bat. So these images are now at a stage where I can take them forwards, edit them, make them look absolutely gorgeous and stick them on my Instagram, my Facebook or my Vero. Vero? Vero? How are we pronouncing the new platform? I don't know. But if you if you kind of like been here for a while and you do follow us on the socials, go ahead and find us on there too. That's it for this video. If you have any questions about this product, please do let us know. Add them in the comments down below. We'll try and answer them if we can, but if we can't, we will refer you over to Data Color because this is their baby and not mine. I think it's worthwhile having. I think it's worthwhile keeping. I've already prefaced who I think it's going to be good for. Those things stand true and correct. I hope this video is useful for you. I'll see you all again next week for another video. Hopefully you're feeling pumped and good and have been enjoying the sunshine if you live in a place with sunshine. And if not, I hope you've been enjoying winter and I don't know where I went with this train of thought, but I'll see you again sometime soon.